right, what's up, everybody? I think I might have to call it the company that makes this earpiece right here. We'll talk about it in a minute. I am, I am ready to send it out the window. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Monday afternoon, Eastern time, every Monday, or starting now, every other Monday. Uh, on Simply Cyber, I am playing World of Haiku or Haiku Pro, and I'm running basically a educational uh, webinar, for lack of a better term. It's way cooler than a webinar if, you, if you've been here before. I, th I think webinar is kind of boring, and what I'm not trying to do is boring up in here. Um, basically, we're going to be doing SQL map. We're going to be doing SQL injection attacks on a web server. Um, I've been in the industry for a while. Certainly not an offensive security professional, but I do know a thing or two about a thing or two. So uh, I definitely try to uh, share knowledge, educate, lift others up, be inclusive. And uh, the good news is the Simply Cyber community, who many of you are seeing in chat right now over on stream right there, um, we've got some really talented offensive security people um, in chat right now. So if I make a mistake, if I have no clue, uh, if I'm lost, um, the best part is uh, the Simply Cyber community uh, digs in and provides those contexts, provides those answers. Jenny Housley, Leonardo, they're always showing up. Bjorn's helped out in the past with the um, web application. I'm just looking for a screenshot of an audience, like a student uh, student audience, so I can... Yeah, this will do just nicely right here. Oh, that's not a good one. I want to be able to look at you guys... Uh, and talk to you because I, you know, looking over at this blank screen, blank camera is no good. But if I do it this way, now I'm looking at all of you. This is fantastic. Hello. Uh, my name is Gerald Dozier. Introduce yourself in chat if you uh, are interested. We have a great group here. I want to say shout out 36 of you beautiful people here today. Chris Rock's in the house. He's also an offensive security pro. He knows what's up. Nick Barker. We're, we're rocking Stream Beats, the Quest album. So uh, if you're feeling the vibe, if you're feeling the flow, uh, that's what's up. Cyber Newbie, hello. Good to see you, Cyber Newbie. Jonathan Reed, what other platforms are you live on? Currently live on LinkedIn and YouTube. I only do LinkedIn and YouTube uh, really quick, just production note. I've been doing this for about three years. Uh, some people are like, why don't you get on Twitch? Twitch is very uh, territorial and predatory with their content creators. So if you stream on Twitch, uh, you basically can't stream anywhere else. Um, and, and make money off of it. Um, so you kind of can, you're either all in on Switch or you're not on Switch. And uh, honestly, I think Twitch is, um, they reward their highest, uh, most successful content creators and the other 99% are kind of like smooshed down. Um, I was doing Facebook, but I've never done Facebook before uh, as, a, as a person, as a consumer. So um, I didn't really push to there. I have heard Instagram, TikTok threads, but I've got gray in my beard, which means I don't really get the whole TikTok thing. <laughs> I mean, I understand what it is, but I suck at it. So I'll just keep it on LinkedIn and YouTube, and we'll have ourselves a, a, a lovely little time. Professor Black Ops is out in here. Josh Mason. Josh, where are you calling in from? Josh is living on the road right now like a boss. Lakshmi's in the house. Hey, Lakshmi. Let's give you a an anime wow, Lakshmi. Just to uh, share with you really quickly, give you guys a little taste. This is the uh, World of Haiku platform, right? I do not have a free play along today, so it's watch along with me if you'd like to. Uh, I've dropped a link in the pinned comments if you're interested in uh, learning more about the platform I'm using. And that's ready to go. Hey, Jay the Hermit, good to see you. Los Angeles is in the house, my man. Love the content. Bachelor's in Cyber student. What's up, Regularius Weed Maximus? I remember my undergraduate days. I was <laughs> a different person, I'll say. Ah, Quebec City. Very nice, Josh. Good to see you. All right, guys. So let's get into it. We'll, we'll jaw jack around as we're playing through it. But um, I do want to get into it. This is the World of Haiku platform. And if you guys uh, don't like where my, ha my head is on the screen or if the audio is uh, the music needs to be louder, just let me know. I am a uh, team player here. All right, so I'm going to click continue. We're going to go through the loading screen here. All right, SQL map. I've cho by the way, in case you were wondering, I've chosen volume 2 Secret of the Phoenix scanner. So if you're if you're um, 
playing and you get presented this interface and you're trying to figure out where to go, simply choose the volume two from the drop down, and you'll see there are three uh, quests here shaped around binaries, file, Durbuster, and SQL map. On the SQL map, we're gonna go ahead and go into the dojo. We're gonna do try again, so we just refresh and blow it out. Christian Valid Valituti coming in on LinkedIn. Good to see you, Christian. I mean, I'm sorry. I, yeah, Christian. Yeah. How long has SQL Injections been the OWASP top 10? About 15 years? Yeah, I'd say, I mean, dude, SQL Injections been around since... Uh, dude, when I went through undergrad, 98 to 2002, um... You know, we were learning relational databases in a databases course. SQL was the language. Now, it wasn't remotely as advanced as, as it is today with like uh, transact SQL, T-SQL, but um, the same kind of attacks and techniques. And the model view controller, which is what like modern web apps are, are the design pattern modern web apps are based on, um, was the current standard. So SQL injections could have worked way back then as well. So I would say at least 15 years, uh, Professor Black Ops, if not longer. I almost wonder, honestly, um, how old is OWASP top 10? How old is OWASP top 10? Let's do that question first, right? Published in 2003, and then Ready? 2003, what were the original OWASP top 10? If I had to guess, guys, it could have gone all the way back to 2003 when it first released Professor Black Ops. Great question. Um, oh, it's, it's very difficult to look at the historic OWASP top 10. If someone wants to be um, a darling and... and uh, look that up and see if they can't find 2003 OWASP top 10. It would be really, really cool um, if, if they had that. Chris Rock's been using SQL injection since 2004. I love it. Uh, yeah, and see, yeah, Chris Rock, definitely an offsec professional. Um, are we getting any better? No, 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 right? Um, the more things change, the more they stay the same. I actually, you know, it's funny. It's funny you say that. Um, so I'm going to make this meme, but I'll just workshop it with you guys. So check this out. Do you know that meme where, um, let me see, uh, meme woman screaming with cat. You guys know that one? Let me, let me see if I can do this really quickly. Okay. I actually, I literally woke up this morning thinking about this. And you know, your question, are we getting any better? It just, it's so, it's so germane to this. Okay, so check this out. This, this meme right here, are we getting any better? Like on the left, the, the woman screaming at the cat, right? It should read, you said you were gonna patch. You said like, it's the infosec people. You said you were gonna patch uh, during the operational downtime. And the cat is saying, we only had enough time to implement uh, the new features or the new module, right? So classic, dude. So classic. Like mission critical apps that can only uh, be, have operational downtime like once a month for scheduled maintenance. During that eight hour window, the app team will prioritize doing functions, features, new module, new capabilities, new, you know, new dark mode. And then they're like, oh, brah, sorry, we ran out of time for your patches. So sorry. Right? Ah, oh, like so angry. So yes, SQL injection. It's it's a thing. All right. What's up, Greg Casey? Good to see you. Yeah, most of the chat is over on YouTube. If you want to go over to YouTube, go to Simply Cyber um, on YouTube or simplycyber.io slash streams, uh, and that will uh, get you over there, okay? Definitely where it's at. Okay, guys, so let's keep going. I'm in SQL map. You can see here the world of Haiku presents us with a uh, a network diagram. We got some firewalls, gateway routers, endpoints, and our little bot here is saying, time to get your uh, your bearings. Just remember any hack starts with a ping, right? Think of it like knocking on the door, seeing if someone's home. Why don't you knock on target IP's door? So let's see what the target IP is. All right, well, let's do this one. Uh, 
So we're pinging this web server here. Very nice, very nice. You can see because it's a Linux box, the ping keeps going. If this was a Windows box, the ping would have stopped after three or four uh, hits. I'm not sure. All right. I sent the list of SQL that Jerry wanted. It's not clickable. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, send it to me uh, on Discord. Thanks, Carrie. Okay, so look at that login request URL. So, oh, hold on one second. Let's curl the IP address now, right? So curl is just basically grabbing the data from a web server without rendering it in a browser, like without rendering the HTML code. And you could see here, the nice thing is that um, Haiku will like call out with a different color, kind of the interesting things to make it a little easier for you. So let's say this. All right, there we go. So now you can see here, we can see a form field. We can see arguments being passed. We are fa feeling fancy with our, um, feeling fancy with our um, SQL injection. Let's go ahead and move ourselves over here. Whoa. <laughs> Hopefully that isn't uh, disruptive to you all, but I want you to be able to see the terminal shell. All right, so let's open a little web browsy browsy and see what's up. I think it was eShop.io, right? There we go. You click the login. So here we are on the login page. All right. So let's do SQL map. When we do man on SQL map, you can see we get all these wonderful, rich arguments that we can pass it. But one argument that you cannot not pass is the URL. This is absolutely required because you need to know what are you trying to inject into, right? And you can see here, the target has to have one of these um, parameter, uh, key value uh, pairing parameters uh, being passed uh, through the, um, through, through like a like a like in a, a, a post all right so let's do this let's log in and you can see right here um right we've got the um we've got the shape of what it's going to look like so we know what we need to press pass to sql map so let's go ahead and try that sql map dash u and then http colon slash slash eShop dot io slash l okay and then I forget how to use SQL map honestly hold on don't give me a hint right away let me let me um let me get this on my own really quickly um all right so slash l question mark and then I think on target url right and we've got the argument okay ready so let's do e equals null uh and and the and is a the ampersand is a um the ampersand is a um another reserved character for passing arguments it basically means another argument all right, so we just were, for, first of all, the fact that you're able to do this um, indicates that SQL map was successful, all right? So it's vulnerable to SQL injection. All right, let's keep, let's keep, let's, let's, let's poke the bear a little bit, shall we? Hold on, let me see this really quickly. Where's my do, 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 all right. All right, um... All right, so let's see if we can, looking at SQL map, we can use it to retrieve, um, enumerate the databases, okay? And then the tables. So let's enumerate the databases, right? And say dash DBS. Okay, that didn't really do much. That's still not doing too much, hold on. Let's see, man SQL map. 
All right, we want it to do connection string for direct database. All right, can we do tables? Dash dash tables. All right, there, ooh, all right, here we go. So we have successfully dumped some tables. So the date, here's the interesting information. So first of all, the database is DBO, all right? That's the database. Now within the database is the tables, and that's what these are. Now, obviously this one is very interesting. This one actually could be interesting as well, right? Uh, this one could be interesting, and this one less interesting, okay? I'm just gonna, you're not interesting categories. But let's just talk about it for a second. Listen, from a threat perspective, right? You guys know, it. listen, here's the deal. It's one of my streams, so you know I'm going to ham fist GRC work into here. I know I'm hacking all the things. I'm like Gene, um, or uh, what was his name? Oh, my God. What was the guy? Hugh Jackman. I'm like Hugh Jackman and Swordfish breaking into the Pentagon in the club, right? With the gun on my head, and I'm like, 60 more seconds. I get it. I'm doing that with SQL Map right now. But let's be true to who we are. I'm a GRC guy, so let me introduce GRC concepts to you. Listen, when I look at this, you might be thinking, ooh, there's just sensitive information in the user's directory. We're going to get creds. We're going to authenticate to the box and privesk, and we're going to uh, own all the machines. We're getting the AD later tonight, baby. Well, no. Listen to me. Check this out. From a risk perspective, orders... Can you imagine for a second if I canceled some people's orders, right? Like Chris Rock's trying to order um, a smoothie frappuccino. Um, listen, this is a this is supposed to be some type of silly like Starbucks ripoff barista uh, system. Let's say Chris Rock orders um, a, a half half a half calf latte uh, with skim milk, right? Because he's he's got irritable bowel syndrome and he's lactose intolerant, right? How nice would it be, not nice, but how, you know, like like Chris is, Chris is giving me a hard time. So I go in and I modify the orders table to change it from uh, skim milk into heavy cream, right? Give, give me a double shot of heavy creamer in my espresso today, right? And just totally knock Chris out of the game for the rest of uh, the, today and part of tomorrow, right? Maybe I go in and I modify who's getting what orders just to cause chaos, right? So there's that. Maybe on products, right? I jump in there and I modify the, the um, you know, a tall grande whatever, half calf and a, a, a bacon cheese sandwich, a double, right? And let's say that's like $15. And I modify the products table to make the price $2 or $1. And actually, just as a little like taking you back to yesteryear, um, way back in the day, like when dot com boom was happening early 2000s, people weren't who were writing web apps weren't really doing fact checking and stuff. You could literally like put stuff in your shopping cart and then modify the code in HTML to change the, the price of the item. And then you could check out at checkout and like it would reflect the price. So you could buy like, you know, back in the day, like you could buy a CD disc man. If you guys <laughs> remember disc mans, you could buy a disc man for a penny right? Because you could change the price. So don't think, uh, <laughs> I am Chris. I'm, I'm not going to blow you out. Um, I'm not going to blow you out, man, with dairy. I'm just saying, it, you got to think of the, um, you got to think of all the attack surfaces, right? It's not just about creds and, and privilege escalation, okay? But SQL map has given us this information. SQL map's given us this information. Okay, so now, now that we have SQL map and we've got the tables, let's go ahead and actually dump columns. And, oh, and by the way, let me, let me do this for a second. I feel like this is probably um, some value, okay? Um, relational database system, RDBMS, uh, table, column, structure. Really quick, this is about a two minute crash course on relational database management systems um, like basically, mo excuse me, modern uh, databases that run like Twitter and like all the tweets and stuff like that, social media, those are considered NoSQL databases and they use JSON with nested elements 
uh, in order to move quickly. These large like Hadoop, uh, Hadoop clusters, I almost said Hadouken, these large Hadoop clusters are using NoSQL, but the classic relational database management systems use um, relational databases um, and use SQL. So let me just show you really quickly. So within a database, there are multiple tables, okay? Multiple tables. This is a table. This is the person's table. Within a table are columns. So think of it like a spreadsheet where you've got your headers and then every element inside the database is an entry into the uh, spreadsheet, right? And that's why like a simple database is a spreadsheet and that's why you know, auditors and people use spreadsheets all the time because it's a one table database, one table database. Now here's the power of relational databases. When you introduce another table, let's say um, nationality, right? You could add, you could add another column saying nationality and then it's like Jody or like uh, home state, right? Like let's not make it a race thing. Home state, right? And this could say Jody, Australia, Joyden, North Carolina, Grace, uh, Canada, right? I'm trying to be inclusive here of, of international people as well, right? So you could add that, but it starts getting messy really quick. So you would create a, you know, home state table, right? And then have like state, maybe province, maybe nickname, whatever, flag. You could have that all. Now here's where it becomes a relational database. You see this, this seemingly innocent, um, column right here the id column that is a primary key for this table and in every table in every relational database there's going to be a primary key it has to be unique no other entry in this database will ever have two for an entry jaden has got it okay so the thing here is now you'll have a person state um relational table as well and it would have just uh, you know, a primary key, obviously, but then you'd have like ID two and then country ID four. And let's say four is a unique primary key in the state table. Okay. So now you can quickly say, you know, you can use a join basically, and you can see that Jaden is from South Carolina. Okay. Hopefully that clears it up, but this is what relational databases are and why they're used in the first place. Okay. All right, so now that we have this database and these four tables, let's go ahead and look at the columns in um, in uh, one of the tables. So I think I think the the um, yeah. So you could see here really quickly, guys. Can you see it? Um, yeah, you can see right here. I've included a new argument to the SQL map saying, I want you to look specifically at this table categories and then dump the columns. Again, columns is what we just looked at, right? So if I dump the columns, you can see the categories column is not that interesting. Name, only name a category. So that's not really interesting. So let's look at more of the categories. I think product was another, or orders, right? We were gonna spike Chris's coffee. So let's look at orders. ID, user ID, product ID. Okay, so it looks like we're unable to change the dairy content of Chris's coffee, but we could we could get rid of, we could make Chris, we could give Chris's coffee to somebody else, right? We could change the user ID and give it to me, right? So Chris has already paid for it, but I can walk into the shop and be like, one order for Jerry guy. And they're like, here's your, here's your coffee. And then Chris walks in and he's like, Hey, where's my coffee? And they're like, we have no record of you, sir, having coffee. We looked in the database. And meanwhile, I'm twisting my mustache, okay? I'm like, ugh, Chris Rock, I got your coffee, okay? So um, just as a really quick aside, it does say product ID. So it's possible that the product of having extra dairy versus skim milk is just a different product ID, but whatever. Um, yes, if I was... If I was uh, Financially motivated and, and straight cash, homie. Straight cash, homie. Straight cash, homie. I would just dump all the data and then get all up in this place's business. Want to say what's up to people coming in now? Just Ben, Jazzy Jazz, BSEC. Good to see you guys. We're doing a little SQL map attacks all up in here like a boss. 
Well, let's go ahead and look at what the tables are again. I know there was four tables, but I forgot. All right, categories, products, users, and orders. Let's look at the um, products one. We'll do users last since that's the most interesting. Ooh, there's a lot of action in here. Now check this one out right here. Boom. You know what? I'm kind of strapped for cash. I just got out of the joint. I need, I only got a nickel to my name and I really want a grande uh, pour over with two pumps of classic from this barista. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna use SQL map. I'm gonna inject the crap out of this thing and I'm gonna change the cost of that item to a nickel, right? And then I'm gonna go find what b favorite drink is because b the one who narked me out. I'm gonna find b favorite drink and I'm gonna change the in stock bit to zero. Ha ha, whatever b wants, he won't get. We seem, we seem to be out of stock, sir. I can see it on the shelf behind you. Yes, but the database says we're out of stock, sir. Please just turn around. Sir, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Oh my gosh, okay? So this is what's up. All right, now let's look at the users table, okay? And, ooh, this is easily the most uh, interesting, easily the most interesting element, right? So now, and by the way, if we dump all of it, we're not just talking about, uh, we're not just talking about attacking the this barista's website. We're talking about email and password. And guess what? Guess who doesn't use multi-factor authentication? Lots of people. Do you know what happens when people uh, also reuse passwords? And then when passwords are involved in a data breach, kind of like this one? Do you know what happens? Um, I take this email and I take this password and I go to a script and I have it go through uh, major site one, major site two, major site three, major site four, rinse and repeat until major site, you know, 1000 or whatever, and then report back to me which ones successfully authenticated and which ones didn't. So I'm feeling juicy, baby. I'm, I'm very hungry. So catch me outside. How about that? Yeah, I will catch you outside users table. I'm going to take you outside. So check it out. Let's go ahead and dump this. I'm going to look at SQL map again, the man page of SQL map. And you can see here, um, we've done databases, tables, columns, and here's the almighty, uh, the hilarious named, but you know, um, colloquially speaking, correct dump. <laughs> oh my God. Is, do I have a, I don't have a laughing. Ha ha. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, all right. So we're going to, we're going to take a dump of the SQL map, uh, of the SQL database here and, uh, have ourselves a little. A little good time. All right, so let's go ahead and do dash dash or dash C password and then dash dash dump. All right, so there is all the passwords. Now, these, this particular website uh, was a little crafty and has hashed their passwords. Now, you might think, well, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We are trapped. They've, 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 they've bested us. They've bested us, but don't worry about that. Let's go ahead and just dump all of the table, right? So now you can see we have, for every entry, we don't just have the password, but we also have the last name, the first name, the email, which is also hashed. And then this unique identifier we're not really interested in or worried about. So we're looking for a flag on Cheryl's PC. What is Cheryl's PC? All right, Cheryl's right here, 192, 178, 98, 81. So what we need to use is a password cracker. <laughs> exactly. Follow the rainbow. Uh, Joseph, I didn't understand what you're saying. Uh, the passwords are not encrypted, Lakshmi. They are 
hashed. I mean, they could be encrypted and look like it, but let's go ahead and do this. Well, so hold on. We could we could crack all these passwords, but we need to figure out um, what which one is Cheryl's, right? Because we're really interested in logging into Cheryl's machine, and we're assuming Cheryl has uh, reused her password across sites. Now, normally, you should be able to log in with your username and password, but um, this website is not accessible because it's this is for training purposes only so let's go ahead and open a little notepad and we'll do our first one so let's say echo this into uh, f name id a5 uh, dot text okay so now we have a little f name id5 uh, id15 text right and i meant to say a5 but whatever so let's say John F name, and we got a password. Now, if you missed out what I just did, I just used John the Ripper to crack that password hash. And it doesn't matter that it's not a password, it's just a hash, and it was in John's default word list. So let's go ahead as well, right? So let's say echo. And by the way, I can't just pass a hash to John. I have to pass it a file, which is incredibly inconvenient. But I'm sure if there's any like Unix gurus out there, like, is there a quicker way to do this? I think there might be. All right. So let's say password ID. We'll say one five again. And then let's John password. No password found. Try a different word list. So do we have word lists? All right, we do have to curl. We have to pull down a new word list. Let me do that really quickly. All right, so really quickly, I just used curl to pull down a new word list. You could see here, um, this right here wasn't here a minute ago and now it is. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, technically. Um, now, this is a simulated version of SQL map, okay? I, I would um, ask... Um, the. So, this is a perfect example of where I would ask, like, um, you know, people like Jenny Housley, Leonardo, um, Chris Rock, any anyone who's, like, an offensive security professional, I would ask them at this point, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to use SQL map to uh, do update of a database or delete a database or drop a database, right? Like SQL injection, all SQL injection means is that you can inject SQL code and have it execute under the same permissions that the web app is sending requests to the server or the database server to execute upon. So. If you can't, if the permissions of like whatever the service account is that's executing, if it has permissions to do updates and deletes and drops and stuff like that, then absolutely. This instance of SQL map, which is a simulated version of SQL map, does not have that capability. However, I believe you can do it. Yeah, I am going to brute force these passwords right now. I just needed uh, a new uh, word list to um, execute on bro all right so there's our password so our username was um all right, hold on. What's today's date? Is today 9 oh, 9-11. Jeez, that's a somber day. Okay, so 9-11 SQL map stream. All right, so user was Samantha and password was this hot mess. All right, so now let's dump that table again. And you can use John to do multiple uh, pages, but I 
There we go. Oh my gosh, bro. Can you use... I wonder if you can do multiple columns with SQL map. Can you? Can you say password, comma, first name? No, you can't do that. Boo. Oh, can you do it twice? Nope. It only did it once. Okay. So we have to dump the whole thing. Fortunately, it's not that much. All right. What's up, guys? Why brute force versus rainbow table common hashes? Uh, well, rainbow table is... is um, I Well, I'd have to think about that, actually, if it's faster or not. But let me, let me just keep grinding on this because there's only a couple users here. Um, echo this into user uh, idc7 dot text and then let's do the password echo this into password idc7 dot text does anybody got any thoughts about um, this music has this been good for people kind of curious I always write world list. All right, so we got Stephanie also. I almost like don't even want to bother cracking Stephanie's uh, password because who cares? I'm not, I'm looking for Cheryl. That's what I should have done. All right, there we go. Oh, I got an echo badge. All right. We're playing, um, we're playing World of Haiku here. I wonder, playing World of Haiku, just so you guys know, SQL map. Get out of here. All right, and then user ID zero two. Nicole, all right. Stephanie was, uh, was Stephanie. Stephanie. Oh my God, dude, there's so many users. All right, so we've done this one, this one, this one. All right, so 7E is what we're doing next. All right, Echo. I'm not looking at chat right now because I'm focused on this one. Was it 7E? John. User 7E. Joyce. Ah. Uh. Joyce. Although I will say this, okay? The whole point of the dojo, what we're playing right now, the whole point of the dojo is supposed to get you hands-on experience, uh, which I'm doing repeatedly right now. The problem is I'm not practicing SQL map. I'm practicing John the Ripper, but it's all it's all gravy, baby. It's all gravy. So this is D7. User D7.txt. Let's John this one. William, oh my God, bro. William, and he's D7. All right, let's see. All right, here we go, 2F, 2F. Luck be a lady tonight, let's go. User DF.txt. All right, DF. Eugene! Oh my god, man, you're killing me. If you look at my notes, you see me just get progressively lazier as I go. <laughs> D7, uh, D7, 
two F. I think I got that one wrong. All right, let's do five three. Five three. Echo this into user five three dot txt, and then let's John the five three. Daniel, oh my god, am I being punked right now? I swear to god. I, I think I'm being punked. All right, zero C. Let's go, Cheryl. Let's go, Cheryl. Zero C dot text, come on. Lawrence, no, no. Ugh. Oh my God, man. If it's the first one, I'm gonna be so. I'm gonna. Be, I'm gonna rage. I'm gonna rage into the good night. All right. So first one, four two. Here we go. Oh, this guy can smell the hash brown sizzling. By the way. Um, the fact that he even just said hash browns is making my stomach growl. Like, hash browns sounds delicious right now. Cheryl! Cheryl! Hold on. Wait. Cheryl, I've been looking for you, Cheryl. Cheryl! Cheryl! Alright. So finally, guys. We've done it. We found our Cheryl. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for the sub, Kansas City 41. All right, so we got Cheryl, and Cheryl was uh, 42. So let's go back up and find the, the hash password for 42. And guys, just so you know, like, I, you know, I'm not a professional offensive security pr professional, but I will say this, like, in movies when they're just like, clack, 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 and they're in, like, it's not like that, dude. There's a lot of, like, trial and error and a lot of things take time and it doesn't always work out. It's not always clean. Um, so this, I feel like this is more consistent with reality than um, movies, right? Oh my God, you are, you are I'm, I'm gonna, I'm losing my mind. John word list equals John. Is it equals equals? No. Word list equals John. Under I shouldn't have to type this out. Oh my God. Too many arguments, bro. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, dash, 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 dash. Ah. I'm reaching the end of the day. You know, there's like research that shows like, um, Yes, yes. There's research that shows like, um, you know, people, different people perform better at different parts of the day. End of the day is not where I'm doing my best thinking. I come out the gate strong right out the rip. And then what's your opinion of this cyber sec game? Uh, Sturgios. I like this. So this is world of haiku. You know, I have a lot of experience in the industry. I'm very comfortable running around on a Linux command line. Um, so this this platform, World of Haiku, is entertaining for me, and it's it's fun because I like to teach people cybersecurity. So it's a nice platform for conveying that type of information. Um, if you are new to the industry or you don't have any experience or background um, in information security or information technology it's a good platform if you do not the dojos to start but if you do the worlds one through eight and follow the single player storyline it's really really nice i like it so let's go and ssh into cheryl's box remember this is cheryl over here so we're gonna say cheryl at well first of all just for fun let's end map her machine and see if she has SSH running. She's got a lot running. Cheryl's got some lot running here. So she's got um, secure shell running. She's also running FTP. 
insecure FTP. Naughty, naughty, naughty. All right, so share. Let's SSH up into Cheryl's box. All right, and then let's use her password, which is this seemingly good password, even though it's getting cracked right now. What? Wait, what? What is the problem here? What is the problem here? Corwinbanking.io? All right, hold on one second. What is going on here? I wasn't told there would be like an advanced question on the test. What am I new here? Hold on. And and map this machine corwinbanking.io what is the problem? Oh, because I put HTTPS. By the way, hold on. What is, this doesn't even make sense, bro. Like, they're not even running a web server. What are we doing here? What is going on? All right. Let me take a look at this. Oh, Carrie, I see your message. Thanks. I'll get that in a second. All right, so hold on. Let me let me let me let me do this really quickly. Let me take a look at this. I got a little uh, notes here for me. Hold on. So let me go back here. Is there an admin panel? No. Combine three creds to gain access to this device. I should have probably been reading what he was saying, right? Um, let me see. Login. All right, let's do this. Curl eShop.io. All right. Did anybody say anything about admin? All right, so password L. I don't see anything about admin. Oh, you know what? Can we do Hydra on this box? Hold on. Nmap uh, eShop. I mean, hold on one second. Can we do uh, Hydra on this thing? Should I have been writing these people's passwords down the whole time? All right, nmap 192.224.6.183. No, no, what are we doing? nmap 192.218.122. All right, so there's just two web servers, so you can't even Hydra into this box. I'm a little confused. Any thoughts, chat? Yeah, I do need a French roast stat, seriously. Um, I'm looking at chat right now. All right. Let me see. So, I almost wonder. Oh, I see. I see. Give me a second. Give me a second here. Classic. Classic.
All right. So the only thing I can think of is this is Cheryl's machine. We're trying to SSH into it. Maybe we can Hydra. Maybe we can Hydra. Um, Carolyn Hydra. 192.78.98.81 and then dash well I guess Cheryl the thing is like why like hmm let me let's do this let's do nmap on this box here because the funny thing is, this is a simulated environment, so sometimes the end map will give you like the username as well, which I know is like silly, but let's see. End map uh, dash o dash pn no dash sv. No, nope. all right. I don't think dash A is going to work, though. I don't think they have that um, that argument. Yeah, see how it's unrecognized? So you got to remember, this is a, a completely simulated operating system, completely simulated um, uh, application binary of Nmap, right? They've recreated it in here. So unfortunately, it's very difficult. So I thought when we got the username and password, we'd be, you know good to go you would think we could log in we should be able to log in as Cheryl here and log right in but unfortunately I wonder if we could do this this would be interesting I don't even know if this is supposed to be I don't even know if this is supposed to be done right could we do this no not Corwin banking get out of here bro can we do this Why are you like this? Dude, I'm late. Like, what, you can't copy? You can't copy out of this notepad? Oh, my God. You, you are... You are special. You are special. All right. Here we go. Be cool. Woosa. Woosa. All right. So there is the password again. So can we put it up here? Right? You see what I'm trying to do here? Now, I know for a fact that that would work based on what we just cracked, but that's not what we're supposed to be doing here. Uh, Dwayne Parrish, good point, but FTP is not a command found on this Linux distro, so we can't FTP into the anonymous. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's so frustrating. Um, we want to get onto Cheryl's machine. We have Cheryl's username and password. Let's see it. Maybe we can do one more thing. Maybe we can SQL map and dump. Let's see. Let's get a SQL map on. Maybe that first one, because Cheryl was. Um, Four two, I think. So this first one was the one that we hadn't done yet. So let's let's just see who the username is of the first one, right? Maybe we have to use. No, it's usually first name is username here. So let's 
Deborah. I don't know, guys. You tell me. Like, we have Deborah, Cheryl, Lawrence, Daniel, Eugene, William, Nicole, and Stephanie, and Samantha. But none of them, um, none of them we were able to, like, hack. I, I'm, I'm a little bit at a loss, but you get the idea, guys. Um, you can use SQL Map in this game. We were trying to get this flag for Cheryl. In order to get the flag for Cheryl, we would have had to have logged on to Cheryl's machine, which is this machine right here, right? Good old Cheryl running a web server as her main workstation, which is a terrible practice. But let's move on over here, guys. Hopefully you've been enjoying it. It's almost five o'clock, so I want to spend a couple minutes just chilling and talking with everybody. Uh, we've been playing World of Haiku, the sequel map dojo. It's been fun. I've enjoyed the conversation a lot more. Let's see, I'm looking at uh, Prithi over on LinkedIn, dropping some knowledge, I like that. Uh, remote SSH, maybe, yeah, Jonathan, I'm not sure. I was trying Cheryl's creds, because it was Cheryl's. <laughs> All right, hey, you know what? In my last remaining couple minutes, I will share what Chris Rock just shared because um, I actually, I don't know if you remember this, Chris. Um, two things. One, I don't know if you remember this, Chris, but I was, lit I was literally sitting in the front row uh, right in front of you. Um, you didn't know me at the time. And second of all, I show this video to my students on the last day of class every semester. So just so you know. This is the video. I'll drop a link in chat really quickly. Ben, there's the link in chat. Now, um, he says, what'd you say, the 36 minute mark? It's it's a really it's a really nicely done uh, talk. It's fun. Let's see. 36 minute mark. Let's go, let's go. Where, where is it? Where's the sequel map? This is, this was a good talk. Um, I don't know where the sequel map is. Can we watch on double speed? Let's do that. I don't typically watch on double speed, but we'll do it right now. It's a great talk, but yeah, like you're about to see SQL map in action, like full on SQL map, but you'll want, you can learn the basics of SQL map. Um, you can learn the basics of SQL map uh, using this. All right, here we go. So it looks like Chris is using Nmap, classic Nmap. Okay. Oop, that's a web form. Oh, that's dump. So is this... Chris, is this a, a GUI front end to a SQL map? You could see here, um, I you could see here SQL and column descriptions like ad, admin login and admin password are the actual column names, which is unbelievable. Um, and then you could see here he's using Burp Suite, it looks like, in order to inject uh, directly into a session cookie. Um, and you could see here, actually, you know, cleverly, Chris has um, obfuscated the username and password that's going to map to the logins uh, here. So smart, smart, smart cat that um, Chris Rock. And now he's uh, he's using that information he obtained from SQL Map to, in fact, achieve access. All right. All right, so that is SQL map in practice. And what we were doing today is SQL map in uh, a dojo, a controlled space with limited features and functionality. Here's the deal. SQL map's awesome. Nmap is awesome. But if you're just starting into exploring some of these tools, those two tools particularly, you might be overwhelmed because Nmap has like 500 different flags and arguments you can pass to it. 
And SQL Map has quite a few as well. Uh, plus, you have to set up the web app to be able to hack on and stuff like that if you don't have access to one. So uh, the World of Haiku does provide that, um, I guess, lab, for lack of a better term, to allow you to do that. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. I'm going to be getting going here in about one minute. But I do want to thank all of you for being here today. Appreciate you taking time um, out of your day to spend it with me. Remember, I'll be doing haiku live streams every two weeks effective today. So I won't be back until September 25th for the next haiku um, haiku hack. Um, oh, yeah. Hold on one second. Um, Carrie did send the link. We were going to do a fact check really quickly on when SQL injection... Um, first came to the OWASP top 10. One second. This is a PDF sent to me. So let's do this. Oh, this is perfect. So looking at it right now, let's go ahead and switch. I'm looking at, this is the document Carrie sent. And you could see in 2003, this column right here. And where is SQL injection? It doesn't say SQL, it just says injection. But you could see it looks like it was number four, the fourth row, at least one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. In 2003, it was in fact number six. And then in 2007, I don't know what happened to 0506, but in 2007, it, it, it jumped to the top. It took number one. So thanks for that, Carrie and Thanks for the question, uh, Professor Black Ops. Definitely very cool. All right, guys. I'm Jerry, your chat. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Remember, tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern time, I'll be doing the live daily cyber threat briefing. If you want to get your threat intel on and also network with hundreds, like literally we have 350 people there every morning now. It's awesome. Uh, come join us. And if not, then uh, I hope you had a good experience today and I hope to see you in the next stream. I'm Jerry. Until next time. Stay secure. Got to find my outro video. Oh, I don't have one. <laughs> okay, I'm Jerry. Stay secure.